Welcome to another episode of Just More Fix. This is James. With me in this episode is Lacey. Hey. You can find us online at justmorefix.com or on Twitter at Just One More Fix. If you like us, you can support us at Patreon and you can give us a rating and review at iTunes or wherever you find us at. In this episode, we're going to talk about player agency and social systems. And now it's time to get our gaming fix. I'm Willie D. Nelson from All Things Good and Nerdy, a pop culture podcast, part of the Gunna Geek Network. Just like the show you're checking out now. Shows on the network are individually owned and opinions expressed may not reflect others. Find other tantalizingly geeky shows at GunnaGeekNetwork.com. Welcome to Just More Fix. A couple of quick announcements before we get things going today. Lacey is going to be running a uh, pip core system and doing a mall crawl at our next indie RPG day, which we're scheduling for June. And we've got two dates picked up. But we're not sure how it's going to play out yet. So we're in the process of planning what day that's going to be, but it will be on a Sunday and it's going to be two to six in Terre Haute. So if you're interested in a mall crawl and some awesome pip core system from third eye games, uh, come out and check it out. Next thing is our wor- first quarterly zine is published, uh, which is worms. It's a body horror sort of like OSR scenario module thing, and that can be sort of easily adapted into any D20 style game, whether that's a 5e, 30, Pathfinder, uh, any anything along those lines or, you know, Lamentations or BX or whatever. And it is up on our Patreon right now. And if you would like to get a hold of a paper copy of that, if you uh, hop over on patreon.com slash just one more fix, you can check it out there and get access to it. And get, if you find at the appropriate levels, you can get a paper copy or a physical copy of it as well. Along with the quarter zine, our quarterly zine, the Hastings Party, which is our next one and next installment, is uh, full on in the production cycle. I'm pretty sure we're going to be doing the first play test of it this weekend. So I'm super excited for that. Uh, I put up a blog post on our Patreon, uh, sort of detailing the initial part of how my creative process is for laying it out and kind of putting it all together. So if you're interested in how that's uh, coming together and what it looks like, um, there's some pictures of sort of like how my notes become the spreads or whatever. So it's kind of a, a disastrous mess of that is my creative process. And along with that, I'm um, going to continue to update that that sort of, in that sort of same weekly blog style. I think the next one I'm going to talk about how my next part of the phase is sort of like picking artwork that's public domain that I can sort of slip in there for thematic stuff. Commit. Um, there's a couple pieces I'm going to commission to get done and sort of what the vision of that looks like and how it all comes together. So and we got some cool feedback on that on our facebook group so if you're not part of the facebook group you can find that just one more fix podcast and we'd love to hear from you right on right on absolutely and along with the facebook group i just found another one of those silly what kind of player are you surveys but it's from robin laws hamilton's hit points book and if you haven't checked that book out it's really really worth a read in terms of identifying like sort of upbeats and downbeats and how to go about running a game and some different insights and whatever uh from the robin laws's perspective and he's designed the gumshoe system so things like trail of cthulhu esoterrorists and uh feng shui loads of different games so um but i took it and because i thought it'd be fun to do and posted uh posted my results Lacey took it as well uh, which our results were like strangely similar, which is a little creepy and weird. Very similar. <laughs> you know, it's like, wow, except mine were better because like mine was like 90 <clears throat> percent storyteller and yours was 70. And then like I was better in all the awesome areas than you were. I'm just saying. <laughs> 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 I don't know about that. <laughs> right on. So I'm just curious. That I thought I'd throw it up there and see what you guys thought. It's one of those kind of fun exercises to do, whether you use it for yourself or for your players or whatever, and just sort of see what they think. And it's uh, I don't know, it's just a fun little silly quiz that uh, seems a little more relevant than like which Game of Thrones character are you or <laughs> whatever. All right. So today we're going to talk about player agency and social systems. So this came out of part of our open, not open part of our gaming roundtable the other day and realized it's a much bigger discussion than sort of the 10 minutes that we spent on it. So what we're going to talk about is sort of like how player agency intersects with social conflict systems and social conflict resolution in terms of like the rules of the game, right? Mm -hmm. So I thought it might be useful to just sort of lay out some basics of 
like the different types of social conflict systems or whatever. Okay. And then we'll kind of uh, develop things out from there. So we have kind of like a context for this, right? Mm -hmm. So the first category is no system whatsoever. So games like BX or Lamentations, you know, games that just don't address social conflict at all. The way they sort of address it is you have to role play it out and convince someone to do what you want, right? There's just no formalized mechanism for any kind of social conflict, right? Mm hmm so that one's pretty easy to, to, to sort of explain. There's just nothing there. The second one, which is probably the most common one, is sort of like there's one role and it's a binary thing. It's either you succeed or you fail. So games like D&D &D have this because they have like an intimidate skill or a diplomacy skill. Uh, World of Darkness actually is largely this way because they have, you know, uh, the three social attributes. Can't hear me out. So we can go back and forth on this. Because I really thought about it. It was kind of strange because there's no formalized system for how you convince someone to do things but other than a, one role. Right. But there's a form of social currency, which makes it more than a simple yes or no system. What do you mean? Through like boons and stuff? Well, there's social status. Oh, in yeah. In many categories. And there's also boons. Okay. So I guess you could kind of slide that into it. I didn't take the the status <laughs> of the vampire society into account. But functionally, though, at just at a strictly rules way, there's only... You have like subterfuge or empathy or manipulation and that kind of stuff. And it's just one role, right? There's not a you don't have like social hit points that you're going to lose or something in World of Darkness. I feel like status is kind of social hit points. I guess it kind in a way it can kind of be that way, but I don't think it's. It's definitely more of a robust system than Dungeons and Dragons. Well, how is it more robust, though? Because there's only one because role. Because there's status and boons. I see the argument with status, but I just don't know that like when you formalize it. There's not a whole lot there, which really kind of surprised me because it's probably the most social political of the games, you know, it's in the, that's a larger part of that of what that game is kind of designed to be. Right. And there is no um, social hit points or whatever, so to speak, because I kind of feel like the status is more like a currency. I spend this to get you to do things. No, boons are a currency. Like they're literally favors. No, I it's agree. like a barter economy for social standing. But uh, you can also use your status as like a cudgel to say, <clears throat> bang, you're going to do yeah. this because I'm the harpy or whatever it is. I realize there's 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 more moving pieces to it than there than like D&D. &D, right. But functionally, it's still only a binary result. Either you succeed or you fail. Right. But you've you've changed the level of, of risk and reward associated with those things by adding a currency system to it. I agree. I, I, I don't I mean, you know, I, I don't think I, I don't know. Like, there's no counterpoint to that. I'm not saying that. I just feel like in terms of the way the the mechanism of the role works or whatever, the, the rules part of it specifically, you either succeed or you fail. There's no middle of the road part. And then there's no like in fate or whatever or burning wheel. There's no like hit points that you tick off until you get down to zero and then you have to do it. Right. Because if like your status is your sort of hit points, once it gets ticked off to zero, that would mean you're like not part of the Camarilla anymore. That's actually true. You get a cam status for being acknowledged. Right. And so if that's stripped away, <laughs> then... Right. But what I'm saying, though, is like, so if we just have a general argument, I'm not going to lose my membership to the Camarilla, though. No, but you could potentially do other things to cause well, that to happen. Yeah. But what I'm saying, though, is like, I'm not talking like in, in a sort of like world moving, earth shattering argument you're going to have with someone. I'm also like kind of thinking of it in terms of like, I'm just trying to coerce you to do something for me. Right. And you don't necessarily want to. I'm not going to, you know. Right. But there's also so you can say, well, that's straight black and white. But if I'm um, a nobody trying to convince the harpy to do something for me, then there's a strict role where if I fail, I fail. But there's also the potential based on social standing that my even asking could be perceived as a slight that would require me to pay the harpy a minor boon for insulting their character by even asking them for this okay, ridiculous right. favor. Right. So I don't disagree with any of that. All I'm saying, though, is like strictly when it comes to the rule, the but rules part of it. that's not a black and white system. But when the, when it comes to the role, it is, though, like you're going to roll and you either succeed or you fail. There's no mechanism in uh, I guess in V5 there is now where if you're within one success, you can succeed at a cost. But like before that, there was there's no it was just either you succeeded or you failed. I guess they had botch and critical success or whatever. But you know what I'm saying? That's the only reason why I went down that way with it. So so your only system criteria at all is based on Apocalypse World succeeding no. at a cost. No. Or fate. Like, no. Like, that's the next choice. Well, no, so the, okay, so then uh, my other thought was, like, it's it's one roll. It's just one straight roll, right? The, the decision comes down to one roll, right? So 
that's in that D and D world, right? It's just one roll, succeed or fail, right? Then we have in like apocalypse world, it's it's still only one roll, but you have six. There's a section in the middle, right? And then there's pick lists that very clearly define what you can and can't do, right? Okay. So then the third category is where it actually has a full on conflict system built into it. So. Like when you think of terms in terms of like D and D winning, you're you're battling something. There's a huge amount of rules built around how you fight things, right? Well, in Burning Wheel and Mouse Guard, it's the same way. There's a huge amount of rules built around how you go about social conflict and social combat, right? Mm. And in terms of fate, it's the exact same. There's no difference. Social conflict works the exact same way as physical conflict, right? You just take mental stress as opposed to physical stress, and then your your consequences are just mental or social as opposed to physical, right? Yeah. So that's what I, that's the way I was kind of breaking it down. It's like there's more of a thing of of a back and forth of this is my social attack to you. Now I make a roll. Now you're going to come back at me. It's like a, like a back and forth actual conflict system as opposed to just we have a role playing moment and now there's one roll. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's I guess the, the perspective that I was taking on it. And I'm not saying one is more right than the other. I'm just saying that's like broad categories. It's just the way I was envisioning it. I don't know. I just don't think it's that black and white. Well, I think I, I agree that World of Darkness kind of straddles a couple because it's somewhere between well, and there's also the whole influence system so like there's a way to damage people's influence which is also kind of social no well but no i'm, not, I'm talking about like social conflict where i'm trying to coerce you to do something yeah. right okay because like i think that's a like a downtime thing like a whole separate do you know what i mean you know because where I, where I was figuring things was like more in a player agency i want you to do something that you don't want to do okay right that's that's the approach that i'm taking so you're talking it. about direct one-time action yeah. Or it could be, a, you know, like I, maybe I'm going to convince you to do something that could have larger effects on you or whatever. But mm-hmm. but it's it's an interpersonal um, interaction between two characters or a character and an NPC. And then the, how that is resolved, I guess, is how I'm trying how I'm looking at this. OK, if that makes sense, because mm-hmm. that's kind of like what we came around to last time, because you talk about rolling a diplomacy and then if you succeed, yeah, then you just do what it. I was talking about. Right. Yeah. So that's kind of the approach that I was taking this and that, you know, how much agency do you have? When those moments happen, right? So those are the four kind of broad categories then, right? That I've just kind of, I don't know, arbitrarily decided what they, what they are or whatever, right? And I, I agree, like most things are not super clean, you know. But so I guess um, also probably mention, uh, bears mentioning one of the things is obviously in this context, we're talking about trying to coerce someone to do something that they their character doesn't want to do, Right. So and we're talking about player versus player encounters. Right. So obviously, you know, it kind of bears a mention uh bears mentioning of safety tools and stuff like that. So if it's something that's like a hard no for the game, obviously, then this is just sort of, you know, a non issue. It just doesn't happen. Right. You know, right. very clearly. But we're talking about is where maybe it's a situation that's not in your character's best interest, maybe, you know, to go into the battle as opposed to stay here or to do something against their own best interest or whatever it is. Right. So in terms of player versus player, I guess I'll let you sort of just lay it out because the way we talked about it before was like there's like a diplomacy role and then you just think it should be what it is. Or do you want to lay it out? I, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but right. yeah, no, that's pretty much my opinion. Um, <laughs> so you have two players and let's just say there's a pretty standard argument between Let's call it a rogue thief and, and uh, you know, the Paladin fighter figure. And the Paladin's like Paladin, right? I'm sorry. Either I way. say it wrong, don't I? I um, don't know that I... <laughs> it's actually a French word that comes from Charlemagne, so I don't speak French, so I'm not going to pretend to know. I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be I say Paladin. I say Paladin, but... Yeah, anyway. Oh, whatever. I don't care. Conversation derailed. <laughs> whatever word you want to call the shiny religious dude with the armor and the high morals. Right. Um, <laughs> and, and spells and a giant sword, probably. Right. <laughs> He's like, so you probably shouldn't take the sack of gold from the church. Okay. I think I should take the sack of gold from the church. Right. Right. Yeah, okay. Because I'm selfish what they and for? whatever. I, right. I wanted it more. Like, you're right. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, okay. I just yeah, want, yeah. If I just want it more. <laughs> right. I stole these batteries. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, <laughs> Whatever it is. And just maybe people think the Paladin would have more charisma or more diplomacy, perhaps, okay. because he's a, a paladin. Mm-hmm. Or you know, it could it could very easily go the other way. Maybe mm-hmm. you've been in a scrape or two. You're used to talking your way out of trouble, right. and so then it it comes down to a, a role, mm-hmm. and. So then you're like, okay, I, I'm trying to convince you not not to take that. So I'm going to make a diplomacy role, mm-hmm. you know, 
and we do that and I win and it can be a contested role. Like it isn't, that's usually how you do things in D and D. Yes. No. So I'm like not if you were sure. To both have diplomacy. I don't well, know what the I, odds of that would be. But. So in five, I'm not sure how they handle it, but in D and D there would be, you would have diplomacy and then it would, I think believe it would be opposed by sense motive because it's like, you're trying to convince me to do something. And then my sense motive is to realize your sort of coercive methods or whatever to sort of be like, ah, I see what you're trying to do there. That is not my best interest. Right. Right. So, and I, and I, it's but been what, a long yeah. time. I could be wrong. So but. whatever the, the case would be mechanically. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so then it would just be well, my paladin wins the check, so you're going to put the gold back. Okay. And so some people, I guess, would have a problem with that because that's not what your character wanted to do. Mm -hmm. But what I have a problem with is when we go through and we build characters and all of your skills and attributes become immediately handy um, and useful because you've put them in things like climb or right. swim or... <laughs> or jump or right. All the whatever other, stabbing physical, the things yeah, yeah, like yeah. you're that's what you're good at mm -hmm. and those are all relevant to what's going on in the game but when i've chosen to make a character that has some sort of social skill for some reason is not acceptable for me to do that like how many times like i'm not advocating for killing other players in the game but we've all been in games where mm -hmm. somebody else has shanked our character and like right. you may be mad at it but the dm's not like no you can't do that mm -hmm. well yeah I, like i can clearly stab you that's a thing i can do will mm -hmm. there be consequences probably <laughs> and i don't see why this should be any different and i think sometimes people just get a little salty about it because it doesn't take very long if right. that makes sense like so when you have these more robust social conflicts at the end of the thing there's still a winner and a loser but mm -hmm. people seem to be more okay with it because there was some big mechanical process that happened i i see what you're saying about the arbitrariness of a more robust system but what i think sometimes it comes down to is in that situation right so you're the you're you're the one saying I've got to put this stuff back because I've stolen it, right? Mm -hmm. So you're going to make this roll. Now, one of the problems I think ex that exists is in Dungeons and Dragons. There's not like a social initiative, right? So then, do you make your roll and then that's it, and I don't get a rebuttal? Do you, do you like? I feel like on my end of things, there's no reprisal from me other than physical violence. Maybe do you know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. if we've already conceded that this is the one, let's just make that concede initially, right? You, this is the one rule it's made. You succeed, I fail. I put the goal back, so I don't have any other way mechanism to negotiate something else or whatever. Well, I I think that it is appropriate to ask the players like, how are you going to approach this? Mm -hmm. You know, so you've you know, sorry, I'm saying you know a lot. Um, this incident happens. And then you should narrate how right. the conversation looks. So that can impact how it plays out. So maybe uh, I say this and as an aside, you know, you say, OK, OK, I'm going to put it back. And then as an aside, you say, you know, hey, out of character, I'm just going to tell him that I'm going to put it back. But really, I'm going to slide of hand and steal it. So then, you know, that would be different. I won't have to, you know, you'd have to make like a bluff check then as opposed to mm -hmm. me making a diplomacy because now I think, oh, well, you just are, you know, again, like sense motive versus bluff or something like that. kind of just taking away the role from the from the the virtuous character that wanted you to put the stuff away? If you just say, yeah, I'm going to put it back and then you do it and then try and make a sleight of hand roll to keep it, isn't that just, you know? No, but then there's still... Like I said, you still use like sense motive as and bluff as opposed to diplomacy and sense motive. Like you're still doing the same thing. So it's like another round of social interaction then. Mm -hmm. But I don't think you would be able to do that if the diplomacy checks already been made. Because at that point, you've been coerced into doing it, right? So it's okay, not so fair it's to like, turn around so and say like... I see. So there's this role playing moment that happens and you're the one that initiates the role. So it's like deciding your approach to right, how you're going right, right, to... Right. Right. So because you called for the role, your role is what makes the decision. Whereas if you said, put that back and I said, OK, OK, I'll put it back. And then I say, I'm going to pretend to put it back, but I'm making my sleight of hand roll. Mm -hmm. Then it would be me initiating the thing. And then my role would stand. Is that what you're saying? Basically, it kind of depends on who initiates the role. Yeah. OK. I mean, like, you know, use your best GM judgment. Right. right, right I still right. think there should be yeah. a role. And obviously there should be some role playing and discussion that leads up to the role first. It shouldn't just be. I'm not a big fan of saying, 
uh, I'm going to convince you to put it back and I make a roll. Like, that's not fun. Right. That's not, and not compelling. Well, I'm not a fan of that. I understand that some people are just more mechanical. And to say, if mm-hmm. you're a mechanical person, you can only play physical characters. Right. That's not fair either. So what I generally do in those situations, because we've actually had something similar, similar to that happen in one of our indie RPG days. So they made the, the person made the role and they succeeded. So then my, my question to them was what, what does your argument look like? I didn't ask them to actually make the argument, but it was mm-hmm. sort of like, give me the highlights of what your argument is and sort of what, cause that can sort of flavor how the, uh, the person who's being affected by this role, how they react to, to what's going on. Right. Cause it, 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 you don't want it to feel flat, but you don't want to force someone into, into some giant argument or discussion that they're not comfortable with having. Mm-hmm. So then I think the salute, the, the middle ground is to say, you know, what is your, what is your, position look like you know that kind of a thing all right so what we the the situation we've laid out here is pretty basic right and i i don't know that i have feelings one way or the other in sort of like these more benign situations like hey don't take that you're going to take first watch or whatever this you know you know i mean like those are pretty fundamentally they're not that big of a deal right Mm -hmm. but what if we put it into a context of something that's much much bigger and much worse uh in terms of acting against your character's own self-interest, right? So let's 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 do like a world of darkness scenario, right? So um we'll say my character is this um sort of like Nosferatu information dealer, right? And your character is a sort of like a, a Bruja street thug, okay? Mm-hmm. And I've got information to sell you and I'm, I'm trying to convince you perhaps that uh the best way to okay, so I've sold you some information, right? And my goal is to convince you to go um, physically wreck some some business or something, right? That will greatly affect uh, one of my political rivals. Okay, and you know that mm-hmm. you know that that's my sort of like my goal and what I'm trying to do. And you also know that that's definitely not in your own self interest, and things will be really really bad if you get caught, right? So how do you feel about I make this one roll and now you have to go do this thing in that same exact situation, right? So I call for the roll. I, we have this discussion and I say, you need to go do this, you know, for whatever reason. I make the roll and I succeed. So, like, do you feel the same way? Because that's taking, like, we're talking about, like, a lot of player agency in that situation. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it's also a system where you're used to having things like that happen, so you're talking about a world in which the power dominate exists. Oh, yeah. Like you're familiar <laughs> with the fact that like people can just make you do things. So I, right. I think you make that concession when mm-hmm. you sit down to play that game that people are going to be okay. able to make me do right. things that I don't want to do. And I so think that's part of the problem, too. OK, so supernatural powers aside, because I will admit I have been dominated to just do absolutely terrible things that were right. in like just bad for my character. Right. And it's fun to me. I think it's like I say all this. I'm being def- I'm just playing devil's advocate in a way because I mm-hmm. enjoy doing those things that are against my own self-interest and I enjoy sort of um, pushing myself down so I can come back and try and find a way to get back at you for it or whatever. Right. But all that said, taking presence and dominate and that stuff out of the picture. Right. So we're just having a social interaction and there's nothing supernatural to compel you to do it. Right. Mm-hmm. Do you feel like the, the same sort of mindset should stand for like I'm gonna now I'm gonna make a manipulation plus subterfuge against you and you're gonna make and then you'll roll your what I guess maybe I don't have a character sheet in front of me um uh, wits plus composure or something do you, you know you know um against against me to see who gets the better end of the situation here or what does that look like I mean, I think again you kind of define the approach with role playing mm-hmm. but like at the end of the day. Yeah, I feel like if the system says it stands, then it stands. Okay, so... And then you role-play those results, like... (laughs) Mm -hmm. Okay, so... But does that shortchange the powers of, like, dominate and presence in a way? Hmm. Well, no, because dominate just, like, you automatically succeed unless they... There's still a role against their willpower. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. But it works differently, like... So, because you're giving like a really specific command, right? But I could tell you, go destroy the prince's business, and that could be my command. And if I make the roll, then you're you know you'd be compelled to carry that out or whatever. Mm-hmm. 
So is that any, is, do, do you feel like that's a, like a supernatural compulsion to go do that, right? Yeah. So do you feel like that's a different style, like that comes in conflict with those rules or do the rules in that case, are they shortchanging that, that power? Because now it's just anybody that, that has a good social role can do that? I hadn't thought about that. Like maybe a little, but at the same time, it there's the opportunity that something else could happen between here and there if you weren't dominated. So like right. maybe, you know, I'm walking along and I see my other Bruja friend, Steve, and Bruja right. friend Steve is like, what, what are, you are you doing? Yeah, you this know, is not a good idea, a dude. a terrible <laughs> idea. And, you know, I can be right. talked back out of things just as easily as I can be talked into them. Like if, if you dominate someone... That's just, that yeah, that yeah. thing is going to happen. Right. I agree with that. I think that that's sort of like makes sense. I guess it's just sort of do, would you feel cheated then if every time that you sort of use those social manipulations that if I mean, it seems reasonable when if you were going to go do something that unless it was like right away, right, like an impulsive mm -hmm. sort of. I, OK, I see how it seems frustrating and like you're shortchanging somebody when you put it like that. Mm -hmm. But I would say if you go back and, and at the same time you look at it like this, well, the Bruja just decided he was going to pummel my Nosferatu and I didn't mm -hmm. put any points in potence or fortitude. Right. So I guess I'm just going to be unconscious now. <laughs> is that any less right than than what you're talking about here? I don't know. I just feel like we get really used to shortchanging social, social. and mental skills, especially social skills yeah. in games that you don't mm -hmm. like. It, it seems unfair well, when you use them the same way yeah. that you're using physical skills. So that's that's one of the reasons why I think the world of darkness is an interesting way to kind of to look at this because on your sheet. You get to choose. It's not like you choose to be fighter and I choose to be bard. I get social skills and you don't. Or maybe we'll take it out of D&D &D and put it into sort of like a 40K thing, right? I'm the cleric, you know, the of the emperor. So I have loads of social skills. That's, what, that's my jam. That's what I do, right? I'm like the acolyte. And you're the guardsman. So you know and have social skills. Like, that's not your jam. Or maybe you're the, the tech priest or whatever. Like, no social skills. So... But those are sort of based around class, right? Whereas in World of Darkness, you just get a series of dots and you get to put them wherever you want. There's no class right. system, right? And and I feel like the amount of feeling like you got screwed over should be the same in a social mm -hmm. battle between Littlefinger and Gregor Clegane as it is the opposite direction in a physical right. battle. I agree. I think I, I, I definitely... You should walk away with the same sort of I've been completely dominated by someone who has a much better understanding of the game than I do. <laughs> right. No, I, I don't disagree with your with what you're the essence of what you're saying. Do you know what I'm saying? I just think that um, in games that don't have a larger structure around their social conflict mm -hmm. is where I think things can be kind of complicated because part of it is it's not like if I beat your character down in a physical situation, right? There's rounds that are going to happen and you're going to get an action and there's and whether or not you're a physical character or not, there's at least going to be a moment where you have a chance to do something, whether that's flee or fight dirty and poke me in the eye or whatever it is. Right. There's a moment where you have a chance to do something. Right. And and that's because there's a larger system built around a physical conflict. Right. But most games are not structured that way for social stuff. So it's more about um there's maybe only very roughly some skills you get to choose from, like diplomacy or whatever it is in a D&D &D sense. But there's not a moment of I'm going to roll sort of like a social initiative and so are you. And you have this many uh, mental stress and, or in terms of burning wheel, you have your disposition, which is like how strong your argument is. Right. So like. I feel like in those situations, people are more likely to accept it because at least there can be some kind of back and forth, even if you start with, you know, just as heavily weighed in the opposite direction as the, your little finger in, and uh, Clegane example, right? Even if it's the other way for social stuff, at least as Clegane, I've got something I can do. You know, like I, I might have a round or two to try and pull something off, right? But there's some sort of a moment for me to have an action and take agency. And if I lose, so be it. But at least I had a moment where I had, maybe it's a small chance, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Maybe I needed a critical success or a natural 20 or something, but there was still a moment where I got to come back at you. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's where people maybe they feel short in those moments is because it's just one role. And what it, everybody has lucky roles and everybody has bad roles, right? So what if you're the social or the the non-social character and you just happen to roll that, you know, natural 20 or whatever critical success and it's like, what? 
what is happening right now? Because there's only there's no chance for me to come back at you, right? Generally speaking, one critical hit doesn't end a fight between two players. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So that's that's where I guess we're sort of like the fairness and some of the the saltiness might come from is because it's just one roll and then that's all. Now we just deal with it. Do you know what I'm saying? Okay. Well, so in your system, like for example, like your non system systems, mm-hmm. so like your BX, your LOTFP, would would you have them make a roll versus one of their saves, like as if it were a spell use? I think I might do a charisma check, maybe. Like I would roll my charisma, and but it would be an imposed roll and not a set difficulty based on the stats on your right. So, well, let's say my charisma is fifteen, right? So I've got to roll uh, under a fifteen. So I roll my charisma, and let's say I roll a six. So I'm seven points under, right? And then you're going to roll your charisma and check for how far under how good of a success you get, and then we'll compare those two numbers for who wins. Or maybe if I'm trying to convince you to do something, it's a terrible idea. You know, yeah, you can. This this bridge totally looks safe. Go across. Maybe I roll my charisma and you roll your wisdom or something like that. Do you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? I think that might be an easy solution in that situation because you can always default to, to to statistics checks when it's in that kind of a situation. I think, but and and in that situation, I think it may be easier to be okay because it's it's sort of a resisted thing. So maybe that kind of touches back to the initial example of the the rogue and the the paladin that are like don't steal or steal and diplomacy versus sense motive mm-hmm. you know i would just feel cheated if it was a moment where like cuz i don't mind doing things that are bad for my character i think it's fun that's what makes the game cool but i would feel cheated if you just made a roll and i got nothing you know what i mean like yeah. and it's just like okay did you make it okay i do the thing you you know what i'm saying yeah okay so i guess and then in terms of dis- decisions, the way these things will go, I guess it's kind of like three categories, like something that's sort of benign, not a big deal, you know, something that is uh, in your worst and in- not in your best interest as a character. And then what about like things that are like directly opposed to sort of like your moral compass as a character? Do you know what I mean? Still still within the realm of like, I don't need to use a safety tool in this situation, but maybe my character is, oh, let's go the opposite direction then with the, with the, the rogue and the paladin. So... Um, you're the paladin, I'm the rogue, and there's this huge battle that just happened, and we're in this village, right? And we know there's more bad people coming, and I'm like, we got to get out of here, or we're gonna all going to die. And you're like, no, we need to try and rescue as many of these innocents as we can. And I'm like, nope, we're leaving. But you know that's like against your moral code, according to your god or whatever, right? So it's like mm-hmm. a, a big deal. <laughs> Is that still just like a one roll deal, or should there be, like, should you get a bonus because I'm trying to convince you to do something that's against your own moral code? I think it makes sense to to have a bonus when you're like when there's a strong set of religious or character defined beliefs. Mm-hmm. Maybe like your level of paladin gets added in. Oh, right on. You know, so that like could the be a more cool way to committed you are to your right. your path, right? The, the yeah, more the less likely you are to stray from it because you've been tempted before. Yeah, but. the first level paladin is like. Ah, uh, okay, but like your tenth old was like, nope, I'm here for the long haul. Been doing right. this long time. Yeah. I've been down on the odds before. That's right on. That God's could make had sense. had my back this whole time thus right. far, you know. And uh, and at that point, you know, you're sort I, of like, I still think it should be a role though, because oh, yeah. oh, let's be honest, like the devil's made a pretty good business of talking people into doing things. <laughs> so, Fair enough. Like, Fair enough. <laughs> I agree. I think no. I think the I think the level thing makes a lot of sense. Um, and then in terms of like a world of darkness thing, maybe you could use uh, the character's uh, road rating. Right? Mm-hmm. So like if you're on the path of uh, power and in inner voice and I'm like, no, you really shouldn't take advantage of this person. And you're like, oh, I totally am. Maybe you should get uh, a bonus based on like how far along the, the path you are or whatever mm-hmm. or humanity or whatever the given situation is. That's a good idea. I like that. That's something that could be really easy to incorporate in the moment. And it's also something very clear for everyone to see on their character sheet. Oh. If I'm going to violate my own character's ethos, I at least know I have a, a pretty good bonus against that. So could work in an interesting way in the opposite direction, too. Right. Like thief's got a thief. I'm a level 10 rogue. <laughs> <laughs> thief's got a thief. <laughs> right on. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> that could be fun. Well, it could be interesting seeing things uh, go that way in that opposite direction, I guess. Yeah. Some of them, it wouldn't necessarily be as clear. It's like, well, I'm just the the fighter, so <laughs> I don't know what that, you know. But I think maybe that comes down to if your character has a more defined personal ethos about what you believe or right. whatever, you know. Do you do you follow a, a specific god even though you're maybe not a, a, um, 
like a cleric or something, you know, along those lines. That's very cool. I like that. So I guess I have one, a couple other small things. So in terms of like PC versus NPC, do you feel like it should be the same way? Yeah, I think so. Okay. So I agree. I, I definitely agree with you when the PC is trying to coerce the NPC to do something. Right. Mm-hmm. But I think when you flip it the other way, it seems a little weird because it's like now it's a role of me trying to convince you. Like I could see it where you're not on my plot and I want you on my plot because I did all this planning. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to use my NPC's diplomacy to make you do the thing I want you to do. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I feel like then that case, it's sort of like a, a game master cudgel to be like, no, I will smack you on the head until you do the plot. Do you know what I'm saying? And I think that that's just like lazy and lacks creativity in a way. Well, like ideally you wouldn't have to do that. But like when it comes right down to it, like socially diabolical NPCs are cool. Oh, I agree. I agree. Like not everybody has to be a dragon. No, I know. And even if you are a dragon, maybe you just don't feel like lighting me on fire. Maybe <laughs> you just want to use your big dragon brain and like, you know, poussants <laughs> to make me do whatever it is you use want. Use that big old dragon brain of yours. <laughs> maybe it's tiny. It's like a walnut. It's True. a stegosaurus situation. I don't know. But... <laughs> Uh, I I kind of agree. I I I, under, I just didn't say that. I I see what you're where you're coming from, but I also feel like as a game master, you already control the entire world. Like, how hard can it be to just set the? Do you know what I mean? Set things in motion or whatever. You know, I don't feel like I need to have my NPCs come around and browbeat you into things. Do you know what I mean? I've never had to do that. Me either. So, so I just thought it was an interesting question. Do you know what I'm saying? I, I guess in some World of Darkness games, I've had NPCs like making roles to manipulate characters to do things. Mm-hmm. But it's more because it's not a plot moment. It's sort of like this is their agenda and they're in your circle of people. So do you know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. like. But I just see like the kind of character where it's this is how I accomplish tasks. Mm-hmm. So maybe they're not physically strong. You know, maybe it's more like a siren situation. Mm-hmm. You know, like you're really loving my message. So if you keep listening, <laughs> guess what? Right on. Okay. Fair enough. The silver tongue kind of right. thing. All right. So I have one other thing. And I, as I was kind of putting this together and thinking about things, do you think it would be worth adding some small mechanism for like D and D, whether that's like social hit points or something, or like because you you could do it very easily, right? Like your hit points for your physical body are based off your constitution, right? So could you do the same thing with maybe your charisma and maybe you have like social hit points? Do you know what I'm saying? And I then mean, I just think you could use like the easiest thing to me would be to use your charisma modifier as a certain number of like retests that you could do for social situations within a set amount of time. Right on. Like, okay, you've got a charisma modifier plus two. So that's two re-rolls you get this session on Mm -hmm. whatever leadership bluff, you know, charisma based skills. Right, 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 right. Basically. Um, But I mean, you could easily create a hit point system too. That just seems more complicated to me. Um, I like the idea of kind of like, you know, the sort of fate point situation or luck point. You Mm -hmm. see it in other systems, but it's so then you kind of get to decide where you concede losses Mm -hmm. and where it's more meaningful for you to try and change the outcome of what's happened. Right on. Because I know there are some games that we play that do have sort of like a mental social hit points, like all the um, uni system games like. All Flesh Must Be Eaten and Witchcraft and Apocalypse. Conspiracy X. Conspiracy X. They all have like an essence mechanic to where you can do like you can do sort of like mental or social damage that isn't like in a I I lose stability and go crazy, you know, kind of a way. Mm. So I I don't don't mind the hit point scale like that or mental stress like fate. That's not Mm -hmm. super complicated. Um, I don't really care for the super in-depth social combat systems, though, because it just gets so bogged down Mm -hmm. and like they're interesting. But they're not something that I want to use all the time. No, I agree. <laughs> I agree. To make to, like every time there's an argument, like this is a little ridiculous. No, I agree. I think when you're in a moment where it's a larger, big, this matters to the to the to the world. My characters are in argument. I mm-hmm. think it m- makes sense to have those sort of like I guess in Burning Wheel how they have the three levels of combat. They have just like full on fight, right, or full on 
duel of wits, right? So it's a full on conflict system, then, right? So when you're saying, depending on how critical it is, who makes that decision? Is that up the to the characters involved? Is it up to the story? Is it up to I you? Think it's, I think it's ultimately it's up to the game master. And if there's an argument to be made that, that the players think it should be something else, then they should make that argument, right? But I think you you sort of address the story, right? So if we're playing a game and we're trying to save a town, right? I can actually think of a mouse guard example where this actually happened, right? And there was discussion over whether the the city sh- uh, leadership should just tell the mice to run and hide or whether they should mount mount an actual defense, right? And that was that was like a huge moment because the the mice were sent there to protect the city, right? So they wanted mm-hmm. them to to mount a defense. So it was a big moment and it was a full on uh, conflict in that situation, right? So it was all of the things, you know, just like you would have like in an actual fight. But in other situations, if it's just something small, I'm trying to get a better deal, give me these resources or whatever it is, then it's just like that bloody versus test where it's just like I roll and you roll, whoever gets the most success wins, right? So I think it, like, I think you let the, the, the story dictate what level of conflict you take it to in those situations. And I think that's the actual guidance in the book because you don't want to go through the – like it's supposed to be for the boss fight, right? The epic moment in the game, you know? Right. The moment, you know, the you can't handle the truth moment, right? That's when you <laughs> should be using using the, those uh, more robust systems. So I, I, one other quick question, I guess. If you have social hit points, how fast do you think those should come back? Just a weird question. I don't know. They're probably as fast as physical hit points. I think so. Yeah, I mean – because I can think of like meetings that I went into Rest, for like, yeah, di- big, me- big things like, and I got, you know, told no or whatever. Like, you know, everybody's walked out of situ- social situation and just feel exhausted. You're like, ah, I'm just done for the day. I'm unplugged. Every I don't day. care. Yeah, exactly. And but like tomorrow's a new day, you know, you're sort of like recharged or whatever. Yeah, so need a day's rest to be able to mm-hmm. regain those hit points. I know. I think like a day is appropriate for most things. I mean, you could always make it more complicated and... I guess that's another thing that fate does well with the the consequences Mm -hmm. where it's possible to take a longer term consequence, but still um, like refresh your stress or whatever, like spendable stress, however you want to think of it. But because there, you know, are definitely things, of course, it can cause long term mental and emotional Mm -hmm. trauma, just like physical trauma. I agree. I think we'll close that one off here unless you have any other thoughts about social conflict and player agency yeah no i don't uh i don't think so i th- i think i made my opinions known <laughs> <laughs> all right well quick as you know we are a member of the gun and geek network so a quick promo for all things good and nerdy episode 350 we just talk about it it's the final show before a brief hiatus this week anthony has a new intel about the next killer to be added to the dead boy dead by daylight Chris has the latest rumors on the rumored Matrix sequel, and Willie shares his thoughts on the new It trailer. The boys also try to explain why Anthem and games as a service model is flawed for certain types of gamers. The show is going to take a brief two-week break. Don't worry. Don't worry, though. The All Things Good and Nerdy crew will be back on June 2nd with another brand new episode. So you can check them out. That is All Things Good and Nerdy episode 360, and you can find them on the Gun and Geek Network. Well, I think that'll do it for us. If you guys have any interesting uh, situations or ways that you have uh, found to deal with uh, social conflict uh, and player agency in your games, let us know. Also, if you have any, see any games that you have been around or played that deal with it in sort of an interesting, interesting way that we haven't mentioned here, also let us know. You can hit us up on Twitter or on Facebook or you can email me, James, just more fix because we'd like to check them out. If you like what we do here, you can support us at patreon.com slash just one more fix and join our awesome Patrons like Tiziano Ferlano, Alistair H., Simon McNair, Alan White, and the OG Todd Olson, and get access to all of our pre shows and raw audio feeds, as well as our, and get access to digital and print copies of our quarterly zine. Uh, the first one being Worms, and our next one being The Hastings Party, which is some awesome self sacrifice, cannibal terribleness that's going to happen because I'm a bad human being. <laughs> so, right on. Well, that'll do it for us, and we will see you guys next week. Thanks for listening. This has been an episode of Just One More Fix. Music has been provided by Kevin McLeod. You can find him at incompetech.com. You can support us at patreon.com slash justonemorefix or follow us on Twitter at justonemorefix. Fix.